Hello there. Today I would like to review two pens. And I have to warn you in advance, usually I do fountain pen reviews. Well, these are not fountain pens. These are rollerball pens. And I can tell you right now that I am not a huge rollerball fan. The reason I got these is that they are from Noodlers, which is a brand I like a lot. And I thought, you know, let's try something different. So I got these pens. This one has been around for a while, and this one is, is pretty new. So what I'd like to do is give you my thoughts on them and discuss the, the you know, the, the good points and the maybe not so good points for both of these pens. I'm not going to show you how they write because that's a little difficult. I use a webcam, so I can't do that. But at the end of the video, I will upload a picture of some writing and I'll go through that in a minute. So let's start with this one. This is the Noodler's Nib Creeper Rollerball. Um, a nice pen. Both of the rollerballs are piston fillers and for those of you who are unfamiliar with a piston filler I think you probably are familiar with a cartridge converter, right? So you have a fountain pen and, and you put in the cartridge converter and then you put this part in a bottle of ink and then you will turn this end and then as you can see this little piston moves up and down it'll create a vacuum and it'll suck up ink into the converter now a piston filler is not that different the only thing is that the piston is right here in the barrel of the pen and this part of the barrel is used more or less as a you know a converter some some a way to store the ink. So, the good thing about that is that it will hold a lot of ink. It'll hold more than a cartridge converter will. I'm not going to show you how to fill it, uh, That's, uh, but it's, it's pretty simple. You can unscrew this end cap and then, I'll come back to that in a minute, you will just put this in an ink bottle. You twist this thing piston moves up and down and it will fill with ink. So it's it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. But the good thing about that is that you can use fountain pen ink, whatever favorite ink you have in a rollerball pen, which is well, interesting. A nice little touch with this pen is that this cap you need to unscrew to be able to fill the pen uh, is pretty small and you can lose it. So the good people at Noodlers invented a nice thing in which you can put the, the cap of the pen on the back and then use that to unscrew this little end cap and as you can see it's it's in this cap uh, it's in there, it's securely, I mean it fits snugly, it won't fly out so that's, that's pretty nice, you can't lose it, you can't drop it on the floor, or whatever so I, I always like these sort of nifty little gadget like things um, the feed of the pen is ebonized the rollerball tip, I think, is actually made by Noodlers, or was it Swiss? I'm not absolutely sure. It's a rollerball tip, and that's, you know, just a rollerball tip. There's no real... Well, I think there are medium rollerball tips. In any case, it's... it's. I, I'd say it's a standard tip, and I don't mean that in any disrespectful way. It's, it's a rollerball tip, and it does what it's supposed to do. It gives you a nice line. It's a fairly thin line. Um, I really think that would be fine in a fountain pen. Uh, and the, the, the flow is pretty smooth, so it, it, it writes fairly pleasantly. One thing I like about it is the shape of this grip section. You can probably see it, it's a little tapered, and that makes it pretty pleasant to hold. Your, your fingers really sort of slide in place, and that's, that's very comfortable. It is a bit small, the pen, for me, uh, but I have large hands, so, you know, um, yeah. If I use this, I post it with a cap in the end, and then I hold it, and then the, the size is, is fine. I have no problems with that. It started out as a very fine line. I've been writing with this for two weeks, I think, something like that, and now the line is getting a little wider, so I... 
And actually, I have used rollerballs in the past, and I think that's a standard thing. So at first, the tip may be a little scratchy, but after a while, it, I don't know, it, it opens up or something, and then you get a slightly better ink flow. So it's a good pen. Uh, the ink in there, should you wonder, is a Parker Quink Blue. I thought I'd go for a very simple uh, ink. And this is the amount of ink that disappeared in about two weeks, and I do a bit of writing. So it's a pretty economical pen, I'd say. And that's, of course, because it's not a, you know, a gusher, it, it won't, ink won't fly out, so it's, it's pretty economical. It'll, it'll last for a while. A nice clip. The clip works pretty good. Uh, that's what it's supposed to do, and what I also liked is there's a nifty little touch is that here, the top of the cap, you probably can't really see it, my camera I think will not pick that up, but it has the Noodles Ink logo on there, which is kind of nice, it's a nice touch. This is the demonstrator, and to tell you the truth, I have no idea whether they also make this in colored versions. I have the feeling they don't, but um, I'm not absolutely sure about that. So in all, I like it. I like this pen. Let me just go through the other one. This is a newer Noodler's Rollerball. I think it was only released, well, actually, a sh really short while ago. Uh, one of the improvements of this pen over the older Nip Creeper is that it's bigger. And you can see that if you do them side by side. This one is a little thicker. It's wider. And that means it'll hold more ink. Uh, when it comes to actual size, I mean the length of the pen, there isn't that much of a difference. It's really the, the, the width of the pen that's, that's different. As you can see here, I mean, they, they really are... This one is a little bit shorter, but it's, it's not that big of a difference. So what differences do we have? Well, clearly there's not a demonstrator, so you can't really see the ink in there or the mechanism. It is a piston filler, so you just twist this and then a piston moves up and down. What this pen has, which is a classical thing which I kind of like, is the ink window. So you can always see how much ink is in there. Which is kind of nice. Uh, the, the tip is the same, as far as I understand. Again, the feed is abonite. I have the feeling the feed is slightly different. If you take a look at them, you see that there's a, a little difference the way the, the feed looks. It's a little wider on this one. Then again, it's a slightly bigger pen, so that's understandable. Like this one, this pen writes well. Uh, currently, I think it's a little bit scratchy, but as I just said, this one was a little scratchy when I started too, and I think, I don't know exactly what the mechanism is, but I got the feeling that tip has to open up or something, and then the flow gets better and the line will get a little bit broader and then it'll write very very smoothly. Um, there's two things about this pen I don't like. And, well, maybe they are some serious comments. Um, you can post this pen. I, I like doing that, although it's a bit bigger, I, I still like to post this one. The first little, it's, it's a small issue, but it's an issue nevertheless, is that the, the, the cap will fit on, but it'll fall off, just like that. And there is a fit, there's this sort of metal or chrome or whatever it is, ring in there, and you can push the cap past that, and then it'll sort of click in place, and then the fit is really tight, but you really have to do that, otherwise it'll just fly off and it'll, it'll, it won't be very comfortable. My first issue with this pen is that because you have to do that if you want to post it, you have to push it past a certain point, you really have to pull it off again. Now that is not so much of an issue, but the issue is that this thing, look what happens to the ink level if I twist that. The ink level will move up, right? You see that? There's ink on there. I'll pull it back wipe it off. So, why does it happen? Because clearly, if you if you twist this, then the piston moves up and it pushes out the ink. Now, the problem is that if this cap is on there pretty tightly, at the back, right, and you want to pull it off, it's tempting to sort of twist it and then pull it off. But if you do that, 
you're actually pushing up ink in here, you will push up ink in there, you'll get ink on your fingers, on your paper, etc. Now, don't get me wrong, you have to twist it quite a bit to really get ink up there, but nevertheless, it's, it's a risk, and you know, it would be sad if you've been writing for a long time and then you spoil your document because ink flows out all over it. So be careful if you do that. The second thing I don't really like is that these threads, my camera is most likely not going to pick them up in great detail, but that's that's okay. The threads that keep the cap in place are fairly deep. The, the, the grooves are fairly deep. So if you hold it like this and you are like me, I have a bit of a, a weird thing, which is that I hold a pen fairly highly, like this. I hold it about in this way when I write with it. And then your fingers exactly cover those threads. And the thing that happens is that it's not so much a problem for your index finger and your thumb. But my middle finger is curled under the threads. And this part of your finger is a bit sensitive, generally speaking, because, you know, this part you use for feeling all day and that part is just softer skin and that tends to be a little irritating and clearly <laughs> this pen won't make your fingers bleed or anything but it, it can be a little bit uncomfortable so I, I really have to force myself to hold the pen a bit lower not like this but like this now obviously it was meant to be held like this so maybe this is just a problem for me and not for other people, I'm not sure. Apart from that, I like the pen. It writes well. I think it looks pretty classy. Maybe it's a little bit of a cliche with the black and the, the silver highlights, but I, I don't mind that. I mean, I if it looks good, then I don't care if it resembles other pens. What is clear is that it writes very well. And obviously that's the most important thing with a pen, right? What I also like, by the way, is the, the clip. It has the Noodless Ink logo on it, but it's very springy. You can really touch it, but it's, I mean, you can really pull it back like this, but it's, you still feel the sort of springy quality, which is really nice. So, that's a good thing. Now, the big issue is, which one should you get? I think this one is, yeah, this one is $14, and this one is $20, so this one's a bit more expensive. Is it worth the extra six bucks? Well, that totally depends on you. If you have smaller hands, normal sized hands, I think this will be just fine for you. If you've got bigger hands, then this is nice. It's nice to have a bigger pen. Also, the ink capacity in this one is larger, so if you're on the road a lot, or if you have a lot of writing to do, this will simply hold more ink, which is good. I think this one's more pleasant to write with. Even though I have large hands, I although I like the increased ink capacity, although I like the improved looks of this one, for me, personally, the shape of this grip is really nice. And as I just told you, I tend to hold my pens high, but with this pen, because the shape is so smooth, your hands almost can't slide back like that. Because there's really a sort of tapered thing going on there, which I really like. When it comes to actual writing quality, both pens are just fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They will give you clear results. And they write very smoothly. No problems there. So I did some writing. And you probably can't see it. Let's see if the camera picks it up. Well, a little bit. I'll upload a high-resolution picture of this at the end of the video. Uh, let me just sort of talk you through what I what I did here. So what you can see here is that on the uh, left is the old style nib creeper, so that's the clear one, that one, and on the right side is the uh, the new one, that pen. So what I did is, I uh, the name is on top of there, I just did some writing, so this is just normal writing, uh, just to show you what it would look like. Uh, then I try to see if I could get some line variation by applying more pressure. You can do that with most fountain pens. Uh, in the rollerball pen it's a little different and the effect was not extremely good. There was some line variation in the old style nib creeper 
and almost no variation in the new one. But as I said, that may be an issue. I may have to write a bit more with it, and then maybe it'll open up a little more, and then there will be more line variation. Then I did a little test, let me see here, with a little pressure. So what I did was I really held the pen like this, obviously with the cap removed, but really like this. And I just moved it across the paper to see if, if you really apply no pressure, if you get an ink flow. And uh, the answer is absolutely. It didn't skip a single time. So it's clearly the, the, the craftsmanship of the pen is, is good. It, it really writes very well. Then I did some fast writing with the Noodler's Flex pen. Uh, there are some issues that if you write very rapidly, the, the ink flow won't keep up with your writing. You end up with, with just scratches and railroading or whatever. Uh, clearly, a rollable pen is a slightly different mechanism, but I was wondering whether, because there's also an Ebonite feed, this would be an issue. And the answer is no, because I wrote very quickly, sacrificing legibility for really, you know, trying to be really fast, and I didn't skip a single time in both pens. So clearly, that's not really an issue. So if you're a student and you use this to make, I don't know, lecture notes or something, don't worry about keeping up because it, the pen will really follow your writing and there will be no problems with the ink flow whatsoever. Then I did some coloring. I'm not an artist, but I just tried to create a, 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 as even a patch of ink as I could. With a fountain pen, especially with a medium or a broad name, that's really easy. You can really cover a lot of ground, so to speak, with ink very quickly. And these pens are a little bit more difficult, especially as you can see in the, um, the older one, as, excuse me, the new one. There was really some issues there. Let me see if I can bring it a little closer to you. Um, yeah, it's it, it, maybe a little scratchy. Again, maybe in two weeks it'll be more fluid. Okay, and then finally I put up some, some stronger points and some weaker points. Um, you can read that yourself if you like, but if, I think I've pretty much covered them all here. So, that's my review of two Noodler's Nib Creepers. The bottom line is I like both pens. Surely they have their issues, as every pen has, um, but in all, I think these are pretty successful pens. Even though I'm not a lover of rollerballs, they are smooth rising pens, and that's um, what it's all about. So, I hope this video was useful to you, and um, I'll see you later. Oh.